All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you guys a simulation on what's happen happening when we create our sampling distribution. Okay, so this is a website, um, onlinestatsbook.com. Um, you can go and play around with this if you want, but you don't have to. So what we have here is we have a population where the mean of the population is 16, the median is also 16, the standard deviation is five, and then you don't have to worry about skew and kurtosis, okay? So this distribution that we can see up top here, that's the population. So this is every person in our population, the distribution looking at whatever it is that we were looking at for them, okay? So now I'm gonna create a sampling distribution. And I'm going to do that by taking a sample of size, yeah, we'll do, so this third one, I'm gonna do a sample of size five. And then the bottom one, I'm gonna take a sample of size 25, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and pick out five people from my distribution. So one, two, three, four, five. These five people had a mean of whatever this value is, okay? It's underneath the 16, maybe it's like 14. That is my first possible sample for this distribution. So then I go and I do it again and I get a different five people and I calculate their mean, okay? Then I do it again. I get a new five people and I calculate their mean. I get another group of people and I find their mean. And I keep doing this over and over and over again until I get every single possible sample of size five that I can. Okay, so here's another one. That's the seventh possible sample. There's the eighth possible sample. Nine. Ten. Okay, so now I'm going to have it do five at a time. So now I've taken 15 samples of size 5, 20 samples of size 5, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Now I'm going to take 10,000 samples of size 5 all at once. Boom, look at that. That looks pretty normal, right? We do another 10,000, another, another, another. We keep sampling until we sample all possible combinations, which there are gonna be a ton, okay? But now, if I come down here, oop, that cleared everything out, okay, well, that's fine. Okay, now I'm gonna take a sample of 25 people. It's gonna take a while to get all 25 people. Okay, so it did my 25 and it found their sample mean down here. Now it's gonna do another 25 people. Oh, it did one down here. I don't want that one on. Sorry, okay, let's try this again. We're gonna do just one. I've used this website before, but it's been a while, so I couldn't remember what was happening. Okay, so there's my first sample of 25 people. So then I take another sample of 25 people. And I take another sample of 25 people. This is the last one I'm gonna do slowly. Okay, then I take five more and five more and five more and five more. Okay, we keep going. Now I'm gonna take 10,000 samples. And it's starting to look super normal. Okay, but also notice from the one I did before, this one's a lot more squished. Okay, and I should have made note of what the standard deviation was for the last one, but that's okay. We'll do that on this next example. But notice the first one that we did, we had a sample of size five. And now we have a sample of size 25. But we're picking these people out of a distribution that's already normal. So no matter what, our di the distribution we create from taking those samples, that's always going to be normal as well. So let's see what happens if I change this to a skewed distribution. Look at that. 
got a nice skew on this distribution. So now the mean is 8.08, .08, the median is 7, and the standard deviation is 6.22. So now let's compare a distribution where we sample 5 people at a time versus a distribution where we sample 25 people at a time. So let's take the first sample slowly. So there's the first five people. Then we take a new sample and we're gonna get 25 people. This is all coming from the same population. Okay, so now let's do five at a time. So the this third distribution is looking at five people at a time. And then the bottom one, we took a sample of 25 people each time. And then I do it again, and 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 we keep doing it over and over and over again. So we're, we've taken now 96 different samples of five people versus 25 people. Okay, I'm gonna stop here at 101. So when we look at this, we can see that our distribution where we're sampling five people at a time is maybe normal-ish, but we've got some weird dips and peaks and everything. But if we look at the sample where we took 25 people each time, the distribution looks much more like that normal curve. Okay, additionally, the spread on this bottom one is much smaller than the spread on the top one. And we can see that off on the left here. In red, we have a distribution or a standard deviation of 2.62 for the samples of five people each time compared to 1.51 for the samples of 25 people. So let's go ahead, let's take 10,000 samples. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the samples of size five started to look a little more normal but the 25s look even more normal to me, okay? Because if we look, we can still see these samples of five people. If you were to draw your curve, you've got still a little bit of a right tail over there. Whereas the people with 25 in them, it, we don't really see that tail. Let's take another 10,000. Well, it didn't really change very much, okay? We still have a little bit of skew on the samples of five people and we don't see a skew on the sample of 25 people. Okay, so this is what we're talking about when we talk about these sampling distributions, is like what we have down here, the two bottom ones in blue. We took a sample of five people from the population, found their average, and plotted it on a histogram. Then we went and took a new sample of five people. So this is what we talk about when we say, okay, what are we doing in theory when we create the sampling distribution? We don't actually create the sample distribution. We just look at how many people am I surveying to determine is the distribution going to be normal? And we have that golden number with a mean that it's normal if you survey 30 people. Because we can see even here, just with 25 people, it looks fairly normal. The golden number there is 30 people. If you survey 30 people, you're good to go. Or if your parent population, the distribution for the population is normal, then you're golden. Doesn't matter how many people you survey. Okay? And we can see that here. If we do a quick survey, we do 100,000 samples. Our distribution of size five is normal. It's just a little more spread out than our distribution of size 25 for each sample. Okay, so that's kind of a background on 